So everyone, <laughs> silly. <laughs> So right, <laughs> Madeline musings. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna have a regular podcast today at all or not. We've been trying to press record for the last fifteen minutes with author Nancy Mel, and um, the laughter has been flowing. Um, and now I'm crying. And <laughs> welcome to the show, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. <laughs> All right. We really aren't crying. I promise we're not crying. Those are tears of absolute hilarity. This is your true behind the scenes peek into authors on deadline. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I should say I'm going to edit all this out, but I'm not because it's too fun. And I think everyone oh, no. should everyone should share in our joy <coughs> and our hilarity. I don't <sighs> think we're just unbalanced. One of those two. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well, that's well. out of the bag <laughs> now, Nancy. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Oh, <clears throat> all right. Well, Nancy is an, an author of over fifty novels. <laughs> They're all really, really good. <laughs> you read them all? I'm mine. I'm really impressed. <laughs> oh, I didn't read them. <laughs> oh, okay. I just assume they're good because you're published. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we cannot. We cannot do this. No, we can't. <clears throat> the, funny, the funny thing is that readers well, we can, but we <laughs> well, yeah. And really, readers would think we were great old friends, but this is the first time we've ever talked. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> you know that moment, Nancy, where you It's reach... all her, not me, by the way. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no. I'll take full responsibility. Thank you, because I'm a welcome. very serious person. I don't I want people tell. to... And I know this is extremely yeah. offensive to you. It is. It really is. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about one of these amazing books that you've written. <laughs> published by Bethany House Publishers. It came out sometime this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just hold that over your face for the rest of the show and maybe I'll stop laughing. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Nancy has written Cold Pursuit. <laughs> yes. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> yes. I don't know what the book's about. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> Thank you. Again. No problem. Again, I know it's great. <laughs> I do all my homework before we do podcast recordings. I can tell. I can tell that. It was, <laughs> uh, very good. It's great. Oh, oh. Folks, thanks for being, being here today. Thanks, Nancy, for being on the show. Bye. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Oh I'm half tempted to stop recording just for the sake of our readership. <laughs> oh okay. no! All right. So, what's your book about? I don't know. Oh no! I, don't know. I, I tell you what. Let me read the back because oh, right be now I don't think I can tell you. Okay, can I do that? You can do oh. that. <laughs> it says. <laughs> Ex-FBI profiler River Island still suffers from PTSD. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> After a case went horribly wrong, needing a fresh start, she moves to St. Louis to be near her ailing mother and opens a private investigation firm with her friend and former FBI partner, Tony St. Clair. <clears throat> They're soon approached by a grieving mother who wants them to find out what happened to her teenage son, who disappeared four years earlier. River knows there's almost no hope the boy is still alive, but his mother needs closure and River and Tony need a case, no matter how cold it might be. Get it? Cold. Oh, cold. Pers- oh that's but as they follow the, <laughs> But as they follow the boy's trail, which gets more complicated at every turn, they find themselves in the path <clears throat> of a murderer determined to punish anyone who gets in his way. As River and Tony race to stop him before he kills again, an even more dangerous threat emerges, stirring up the past that haunts River and plotting an end to her future. Da, da, da. That's it. Ooh. 
book's over. That's it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's it. A, okay. That's such a great story. Really deep. I love yeah. it. I love Bye. it. <laughs> Bye. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> ah. So tell me about the deep spiritual threads in this book. <laughs> there are none. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> so I just couldn't there wasn't room. <laughs> no, there, there really isn't. Okay. Oh, so funny. If okay. I can remember. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're okay. Fine. River. Uh-huh. River has had a tough upbringing. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I can't remember why, but <laughs> what, what was the reason? Uh, Something bad I happened knew to her. I started this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this had to do with her. Oh, I remember. Okay. Okay. Her father, who was a minister, took off with the church secretary when she was a child. And that ruined her relationship with God. So as she gets older, she's turned her back on God. And then she's lured to a spot next to the, um, some river, I don't know, in Arizona, <laughs> Salt River in Arizona, where this serial killer has been killing people, women, putting them in old trunks and throwing them in the river. Okay. And he lures her and Tony there and puts her in a trunk and throws her in the river. Um, Tony shot four times, and but thankfully somebody shows up who calls the police and they're able to save her before she dies. But she's left with this case of PTSD. Yeah. And she and Tony both leave the FBI where they were behavioral analysts. And they go to St. Louis to open this, um, uh, some firm, some private investigation firm. And so <clears throat> when River was in that, when River was in the river and she <laughs> and she made a deal with God that if God would get her out of there, that she'd come back to him, but hmm. she didn't hmm. after she was saved. And so she's carrying all that guilt and she's carrying the past. And so Tony is a Christian. And so the, the spiritual part of the story is how she evolves from where she is and her anger and her guilt and how she is able to find her way back to the kind of God that her father never taught her about. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's good. That was a really good summary. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really proud of, that. proud of you for that. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, proud of you that I got through it. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was, that was pretty awesome. I like that. So, yeah, I actually have the book. Yeah, on, really on, was. yeah I have the book on my, <laughs> my pile. It's like next in line. So it's right there wow. waiting to be read. <clears throat> my goal was to read okay. it before we we chatted, but you know, car accidents and all that fun stuff. And yeah, I, yeah, I absolve you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so here's my question. So <clears throat> you write a lot. Has, has all your books been criminally inclined? <laughs> no, I don't take that, but no. <laughs> I mean, I guess are, are, are all your books suspense or... Well, I started out writing regular mystery and okay. I had three books uh, uh, from small publishers and I went to supernatural mystery at one time. And uh, <clears throat> then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Barbara Publishing was doing a cozy mystery book club. Oh, cool. And my agent got me a chance to, to uh, send in a proposal for that and they accepted it. So then I went to... <laughs> I went to Cozy Mystery. I did about nine books, I think, Cozy Mystery books, maybe 10. And then they shut down the the book club. Hopefully it wasn't my fault. But anyway, they shut that down. And um, my publisher came to me and asked me if I could write, hold on to your hat, if I could write Old Order Mennonite Suspense. Well, as a writer, you always go, sure. Of course I can. I'm not Mennonite. I don't know. Right anything about them well they have another writer who does all their amish books okay. wanda brunstetter yes and they have a deal with her that she's the only amish writer they have oh, okay right. so we had to go to old order men and i okay so i did nine of those well i did three for them and then bethany house came calling okay so i went with them and i did three no six for them and little by little because i'm thinking why am i writing about mennonites this is so weird 
And actually, I like some of those books. The nice thing about it was that the Mennonite background gave you that good versus evil right yeah. there. She sure. didn't have to establish the good because of their religion. Okay. Mm-hmm. So anyway, then I kind of said, could we back the Mennonites off a little bit and bring up the suspense? And they said, okay. And then the next series, I said, could we lose the Mennonites and just do suspense? They said, okay. So little by little, I mean, first I did uh, uh, U.S. Marshals. I did okay. one with U.S. Marshals. And then I don't remember, did I go to FBI? I, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, I think I went to FBI after that. I have a um, uh, retired behavioral analyst for the FBI who right. helps me, you know, with my books. And when I wrote Mind Games, that was my first series with um, with a behavioral analyst. Um, it was kind of funny because I wrote the whole book because, you know, we're so smart. We know stuff. We research, you know. Yeah. But anyway, after she read it, she said, uh, no. <laughs> so I had to rewrite the entire book because I, oh, no. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. The FBI is full of, I mean, the acronyms alone will crush you. Hmm. But anyway, there's just the way, you know, it's set up and I had to go with all of that, which I enjoyed and I like. But now that I'm able to move these guys, you know, away from actually working for the FBI, they have the background, but they're uh, private eyes, basically. And I have a little more, I don't know if that's even what you asked me, but that's yeah. kind of is. Yeah. So that's how I got the criminal side. That, that's my. That's how you got side. criminally inclined. <laughs> that's how I got criminally. Yes, yes. Right. No, exactly. I get that. No, I like that. I was, I was always kind of wondering because I felt like I'd seen other books by you, but I couldn't remember. I, I mean, I know you more for these types of books than like the Mennonite and yeah. such. But I thought I'd remembered seeing some of those. Yeah. It's been an interesting road. <laughs> yes. No more Mennonites, though. No more Mennonites. I love Mennonites, okay. so I don't want to yes. say. <laughs> no, no, <Mennonites>. no. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. That's it. So, that's and cool. really, right now, I'm writing kind of books I really want to write. So. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Then that's always fun when you can write the stuff that you're most excited about. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, how the, did you. How did you. Go ahead. Oh, how did you get hooked up with the FBI behavioral. Ant, I can't say it. <laughs> one of those yeah, yeah one of those actually people. Lynette Eason oh. she introduced me because she used the same person Drew Wells for her okay. books okay and uh and another another author Linda White which I don't I think she's I don't know if she's self-publishing but she oh. is so good mm. you should read her books Linda J White I love her books anyway <clears throat> the three of us were all uh using Drew for background okay. and for research and so okay and now i have a new series coming up after this one which i think will be the series of my heart because i'm bringing back kaylee quinn from the mind games uh-huh. you know from that series um not as a main character but as a, a, a sub character with my right. main character and my main character is a writer and i've always wanted to do that so uh, she's the writer and kaylee is her source so I got a hold of Drew and said, guess what? I'm writing about us. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> anyway, I think that'll be, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. That's fun. That's fun. It's always that that fun combination of writer with law enforcement. I don't know. It, it just mm-hmm. the way, the way they, the chemistry between them is always so interesting in real life right. and in, well, and there's so much about, yeah, exactly. And, and there's so much about writers and writing and we have such a strange life. And so I think actually writing about some of that and sharing what that can be like, mm-hmm. I, I think it'll be cathartic. I <laughs> know. I think it'll be fun. <laughs> and I think it'll be, it may be interesting to people who don't know, you know, right. what it's really like. They think we just sit around at our computer and go, duh, 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 there oh, it is, yeah, and walk is. away. And yes. our life is just rosy. And yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. just so cool. But there are other things. And so I, I look forward to kind of delving into that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you on that. That sounds really cool. I'm excited about those. Um, yeah. you're And you're right, too, because so many people have told, oh, so what time do you get up in the morning? And do you make your coffee and go sit in your your chair in your sunroom and, and write for eight hours? And I'm like, <laughs> no, no. Usually it's about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And I go, oh, shoot, I need to write something. <laughs> exactly. Because right. I haven't had a chance to sit down yet. 
<laughs> Panic can be a really good motivator. <laughs> a huge one. Doesn't necessarily yes. write good books, but it gets them written. No. <laughs> But gets it done. That's right. Gets it done. <laughs> oh, so everybody listening, please say extra prayers for the editors of Nancy Mel and Jamie Jill Wright on their next manuscripts. Yeah. They're going to need it. <laughs> They're going to need those prayers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, did you always tell stories like when you were little, too, or was that something that you grew into? You know, it wasn't telling stories, but I read okay. all the time. You know, I did I did actually write a story when I was like seven. It was called Danny Goes to the Circus. And I wrote it on line school paper. And I did the illustrations, too. And wow. I can't draw. It's kind of scary. I did it for my brother, Danny. Okay. Wow. So that was my very first book. Uh, but I read. I read. I mean, by the time I was in junior high, I'd read all of Dickens. Mm. Um in high school, I read War and Peace just to say I could. <laughs> it was, wow. It was just really boring. But anyway, yeah. I did it. I just love the written word, you know. Sure. Yep. I never thought about being a writer. Never entered my mind. Interesting. Um, I tell this story, and it's, it's uh, I've told this before, but mm. when I was in high school, it was a really difficult time. My mother was having some problems, and mm. and there wasn't a lot of encouragement to do anything. I didn't think I could do anything. Mm. Uh, but we had an English assignment to write three poems. And so I, I did that because I was writing poetry all the time. I had books full of poetry. Sure. And so I did that. And the teacher got up. She would read the poems, not say who wrote them, but she'd read the poems and, you know, give a whatever, you know, her, her um, evaluation. And she read mine to the class and she said, I'm sure I've read these somewhere before. So she accused me of plagiarism. And I didn't do a thing about it. I mean, if it was me now, we'd be marching to the principal's oh, office. Oh, yeah, but for sure. I didn't do anything. Yeah. So I was 45 years old before I thought, wait a minute, maybe she said that because they were good. Oh. You know? And then I heard this Bible teacher say, if you want to know what you're called to do, go back to what you did naturally when you were younger. Oh. And so I thought about all the reading and I thought about that teacher and I'd fallen in love with murder, she wrote. Okay. So I thought, and I was thinking, I told my husband, I think I'd like to be Jessica Fletcher, but without the high body count. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I thought, maybe I'm supposed to be a writer. So I worked at a bank then. And on my lunch hour, I decided to write a book. Okay. So I sat down and started to write. I wrote three pages and I said, there is no way I'm supposed to be a writer because it was so hard. Yeah. But you know, that little voice in your head that says, try one more time. Yep. And I did. And the words just started coming. And it's been that way ever since. Mm -hmm. So God and I had a come to Jesus. I didn't have a come to Jesus moment with God. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> we had a, mo I had a moment to say, right. You have got, to, I've got to know for certain because I could see by then it was going to take studying I was going to have to learn the craft I was going to have to take time for my family mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it unless he called me to do it so sure. I put out a fleece which is not generally a good idea but I did it <laughs> and uh in retrospect <laughs> I thought I shouldn't have done that but anyway I did and I said okay because we've God and I have this thing about snow it goes back to when mm -hmm. I was a kid it's not an important uh story but anyway sure um, I said, if you want me to write, then I need you to have it snow during a specific week. And I picked a week in April in Wichita. And no snow was in the forecast. On Friday of that week, it snowed nine inches. Now, I did not know until later that it had not snowed, had measurable snow in Wichita for 40 years. I about fainted. I thought, you fool, why did you say Wow. That? But, but anyway. It did. And so I said, okay. And I just went for it from that day. I just know that he's what it's what he's called me to do. Sure. So that's what well, I think. Yeah. I think it's pretty obvious, Nancy. You got nine inches of snow on that calling. <laughs> <laughs> Some people weren't so happy with the snow, but you know, it was <laughs> including I worry about everybody. Yeah, so. <laughs> including you. You're like, no, you really weren't supposed to do it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. So, well, cold case, cold, cold, uh, cold pursuit is the title of the book. 
written yes. by Nancy Mel, published by <laughs> Bethany House Publishers. Oh, I can get through this. Don't this start. Is, no, I'm not. I'm not starting. Um, I'm not sure Don't we've trust. accomplished much except keeping people entertained for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, but okay. it's been a blast having you. It has been fun. Yes. Yes. We should do this just for fun. Sometimes. We should. We should. We'll just have, we I should just do, bad. yeah, we'll just do podcasts of us laughing and watch I us think... go viral. We'll just yeah, have when... like, yeah. Yes. It would be popular. <laughs> we can make other people laugh. I mean, I know, why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You have a website or something. If readers want to actually find out about the book and not listen no. to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, most people are going to have turned off by now, right? Oh, the, I mean, we're, smart, I think we're yeah. on our own. So. Right. For the two <laughs> listeners are, still listening, I what's have, the website? <laughs> if anybody is listening, it's nancymill.com. And I have a contest going on right now. So if you go to nancymill.com slash giveaway, is it giveaway? Yeah, giveaway. Then I have a contest going on for the release of Cold Pursuit. So four awesome. more days Okay, for that. All right. Sounds good. Well, everyone, That's it. go enter the giveaway. You got to do it. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Thanks for being here, Nancy. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs>